Hello, uh, I'm Alex Rose. Can everyone hear me all right? Cool. Uh, so I'm a game developer, but I used to be a physicist. Uh, I make it a game called Super Ruba Resurrection, which came out in May. Uh, it got a bunch of awards and got 9 out of 10s from some cool places. Uh, it's also nominated Grand Prize for DevGam. Um, so here's my credentials. You can see that I'm able to spell the word physics in physics objects. So obviously, I'm qualified to talk about physics. Um, now, the game's a platformer. So the, the premise of the game is when you die, your corpses stay behind, and you can jump on your dead bodies and use them to get ahead. Um, but that's just <laughs> the thing that makes the game separate. But the, the thing that makes the game really good is the physics of the game. Um, so physics in, in platformers is a lot like drum and bass. Uh, like anyone can make a platformer, but very few people can actually make a good platformer. And it's the same with drum and bass. Like anyone can make like boom boom tss, boom boom, tss, but like it doesn't make a good song. Um, the majority of that music isn't good. So to really make a game good, uh, you've you've got to like work out. You, you've got to nail the feel of the game, and it's something that most people can't do, because even children can make platformers. I've been making platformers since I was about five years old, uh, but they're all terrible. But this one was good. And there's a preconception that to make a good platformer, you need to make a homemade engine. Um, like Super Meat Boy, which I'm sure you all know, uh, is a very famous platformer. And it uses um, its own homemade physics engine. but that's not actually necessary. You can make any single... Physics is physics, right? It, it controls the entire universe, and you don't need a specific game engine to make your physics work. Like, anything will work. And my own opinion on it is that someday you're going to die, and people like Unity have already made a game engine for you. So instead of you making a game engine from scratch, you can just use someone else's game engine, and it will work. So we're going to do, today this whole presentation is in Unity. Um, a, a better question to ask is why not use Unity? So I'm going to show you something here, um, which is sort of true of all. Um, th this, is, this is Box 2D, right? The physics engine in Unity uses Box 2D. And it's not very good. And it's got a lot of glitches. So you see my dust, like when I run, uh, do you see the dust underneath me? I'm bumping into the floor because these are all squares. And you see now, I'm pressing left, but I'm not actually, the top there isn't actually moving. And then if I go right again and the left, now I can move. Right? And that's because the physics engine doesn't know how high I am. So if you, if you watch that number there, 7.62, that is my height right now. And if you see it ends in 1, 2, 4, 6, right? And if I jump here, 1, 2, 4, 6. One two four six, right? So I'm at one two four six, right? But if I jump here, one two three one, right? So even though I'm at the exact same height, the game thinks I'm at a different height if I stand here. But even though this is a lower height than this, I can still go over it because the game phys like Unity physically doesn't understand where my character is or why I shouldn't bump into each other. And you can you can kind of see if I just bring up Excel. Uh, you can see why this is here. See if any of you know the answer to this question. Right, 1 times 0 0.5 minus 0 0.4 minus 0 0.1. Right. So 0 0.5 minus 0 0.4 is 0 0.1. 0 0.1 minus 0 0.1 is 0. 1 times 0 is 0, right? So this should be 0. But actually, it's minus 2.77 times 10 to the minus 17. So it, even Excel doesn't understand maths. And computers don't understand maths because th there's like there's tiny little errors. You're you only storing digits to like 16 decimal places, and that's not enough to truly get a, a a good feel for what it is. So Unity doesn't understand why I shouldn't be bumping into the floor. But you see this bottom bear, in fact, is on the exact same setup, but he doesn't jump into the floor. And the reason is you can see underneath him there's a circle. So if I, if I mount a circle to his feet, then he can't bump into the floor anymore because the, the circle's curved, so he sort of slides over things. But the problem with this is it's not a good solution um, because if I, if I want to slide up the corner of here right, and then stand on the corner, if my feet are a circle, I'll just fall off. And uh, 
the title of the talk is Perfecting Platform of Physics, not Hacking Together Mediocre Solutions. So we're going to talk about how to actually make this good. So the first thing you're going to want to do when you start doing a platformer in Unity, and it's a massive job and it's a huge pain, and I can totally see why no one would ever want to make a platformer because of this, but you need to write a system that's going to take all of these points, right? and this is one entire line collider, it's an edge collider. So instead of using boxes, everything is an edge. That's an edge, that's an edge. So we'll go in here. Yep. So the, the code for that, if you look here, I've already written the code here. Uh, feel free to steal it. There's going to be a quick test on it afterwards, so I hope you're taking notes. But there's, it's, it's, it's really long and it's a pain. And my code's bad, but whatever. It, you're, you're gonna, it might be a bit daunting, but you pretty much have to write this code to make your platformer even, like to even think about starting it. But you're going to have to grid out all your squares into edge coordinates. But once you do that, you can start finally making it good. Right. So, this game was originally made in Ludum Dare. I don't know if you know that, but it's, a, it's, a, it's ba maybe the biggest game jam in the world. It's either that or global game jam, but it's three times a year, and I'd recommend doing it because if you game jam, you can, if, if you win, you'll instantly have about 50,000 players playing your game, um, so you'll, you'll have a prototype that everyone has played. And so I won the innovation medal in Ludum Dare 28, which was a few years ago now. But um, the, the thing that was interesting about that version of the game was that you could jump on each other's corpses. It was networked online. So, um, and you could leave death messages. So you could leave people warnings about where not to die or whatever. Uh, but people would put all kinds of silly messages. And one of them was quite profound. Someone put a message in there. Oh, and it looked like that. Do you see the terrible graphics? And that's like, that's my housemate drew that, and he's even better than me, so you can tell how terrible it was. Luckily, I got real art eventually, but um, I'm, I'm no good at art. But someone put a comment, which was, fuck this shitty, slippery game. And the person was completely right, but the physics engine itself was fine, and it's the same engine we're using now, but the values were wrong. So then what I did was, I, this screenshot's really dumb, but you can see at the left, I've got all these things like rigid body, that's like the mass, uh, that's his drag, the speed. So these are all your constants, right? And you need to basically make a system to tweak these to the exact values you need un until you can get a, a, something that feels good. But um, I, I actually wrote something that did it in the game, not realizing that in Unity you can actually use, there's a function called range where you can change something in the inspector. So you should do that, not this. But as, as long as you tweak your values, you can get something that feels really good. Um, so these are the values we're talking about today. Um, and I'm sorry for the colorblind, but I can assure you that these are light blue and these are sort of greeny cyan. Um, so these three at the top left are controlled by the game engine. Right, we don't have access to them, and they're part of the box 2D system. So your mass, your drag, and your gravity. Having made this game now, I would really recommend you actually control the drag yourself and set the drag to zero in Unity, because I've had absolute nightmares um, with moving platforms. Now, I did solve it, and we're going to get to that later. But hypothetically, like, you, if, you just, if you use drag and keep it yourself, um, Keep, keep it sort of in your code, it's going to make things life a lot easier for you. But these three, I think every platformer needs these, right? That's your speed mod, that's how fast you move. Your base jump strength, that's how high you jump when you tap A. And your jump strength, that's how high you're able to jump, right? Then these ones are for more complicated platformers, maybe you don't want these. But these are the variables that control wall jumping, your, how high you go and how far you go. And, uh, and then these are some more advanced functions, uh, the wall jump grace period, and uh, I'll explain that later. But all these red things are things that you don't control, the game engine controls these, but they are part of your code. And you'll notice also that my, my casing is awful, like some, some of them have capital letters at the front, some of them are all caps, because I write back code, but I don't care. Sorry, not sorry. So um, the, the one thing that people do a lot when they start making a game is they make all of the physics based on velocity. So, um, and it's terrible. Like, 
the first thing, when I play a jam game, I'm just like groan because it doesn't feel good, right? So I'm going to show you the difference, right? If I hold R, then I have velocity based movement, and this is force based movement. So I'll show you. If I press left and right, wait, if I tap, then I go like, it's, it's really robotic and it doesn't feel right. It's just, it, it doesn't feel good, right? But if I use force, then when I tap, you see that I slow down, I decelerate, and I can sort of mid like mid deceleration I can apply acceleration again and the place where it really you can really tell velocity based movement is bad is uh, if you're wall jumping you see see how the wall jumps working if I use velocity based movement it looks like this see like you so the only way to do it uh, with velocity based movement wall jumping is to prevent the player like ban the player from moving back to the wall for a few seconds and that just doesn't feel fluid or right so i'd recommend never using never setting the velocity always set the force now if you add to the velocity that is the same as a force because of force like acceleration is the rate of change of velocity so if you're change if you're modifying it over time it's fine but don't ever set your velocity like equals like v equals three or something because it will just feel bad so let me just get a bit of water. But this is um, my formula. Well, it's not my formula, it's the formula, it's, it's physics, right? This formula um, is how in Unity you can set it up so your character will move left and right with force. So you take your rigid body and you add a force on and the, the vertical is the bottom line, is zero. You're not gonna add any zero on. But then you're going to add your speed modifier times by your mass, because uh, if you multiply the mass out, F equals MA, right? So if you multiply the mass, then you're just going to have an acceleration. So it doesn't matter how heavy your character is, he's always going to move at the same speed, which I assume you want. Um, and then this is unfortunately named, although I suppose in Russian it's not a problem, but it's called whore axis. That's a bit ruder in English, but um, the, 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 that's how much you're tilting your stick down. So if you're tilting it down a tiny bit, then you move slowly. If you're moving it down a lot, then you move at full speed. Right, so that's, that's pretty simple, right? Um, but the problem with doing that is, if you add a force onto yourself, you're going to keep accelerating, right? So you need some way to stop yourself from accelerating forever. And there's two ways of doing this, friction and drag. And my opinion is that you should never use friction. Because otherwise, if, if you use friction, right, you're going to be slower on the ground than you are in the air. So, the, so if you have a speedrunner playing your game, they're going to be jumping all the time to make sure that they move at full speed. And you really don't want that. You, you want it to be always the same speed if they're on the floor or in the air. So what you, what you should really do is make the, basically make the air ridiculously thick. So um, if you imagine there's a skydiver falling out of a plane, um, if you, once he reaches a certain speed, the, the air resistance is equal to the force downwards of gravity, and that's terminal velocity. So like, you, you know, like a squirrel can only go a certain speed. I think, I'm not sure if a squirrel dies at its terminal velocity, maybe it does, but like, that you can, if, you, if you're a paraglider, you can't die, right, because your, your terminal velocity is lower than your death velocity, right? But, but Rude Bear, all the time, is falling sideways. He's basically a skydiver falling into thick air all the time at his terminal velocity. He's like wading through thick. Like, it's like the world's made of jelly and he's, he's moving through and that's why you can't run fast. And it's stupid and it's not how real life works, but it's better for a video game than real life physics. Because real life physics is stupid and it doesn't feel fun. Um, so, <laughs> the, so, uh, oh right, and you see at the bottom, that bear, uh, he speeds like ridiculously fast, right? Uh, that's because he doesn't have drag. And you see he never slows down and I can make him moonwalk if I just turn him around like that. Because that's um, like Newton's first law, is that if, if, if a body doesn't have a force on it, then it keeps moving at the same velocity. Okay, so now, uh, the problem with that though is, uh, then you have this problem. Do you see how I'm falling really slowly? Because I've made the air, he's swimming in jelly, right? So the jelly's stopping him from, from falling. Um, so he's just really, really slow right now. So what you need to do is make the gravity really high. Right? So how high? This has 20 times Earth's gravity, and that feels good, right? So it doesn't matter if it's ridiculous, as long as it feels good. 
Um, but the, the next thing you need to do in your engine is figure out how you're going to allow your characters to jump. Because if you have all the physics, he'll still bump into the ground because the engine's handling that. But he doesn't know when he's allowed to jump. So for that, you have grounding. Right. So this is uh, how Unity handles collisions. It has a, but if you're using Box2D in any engine, uh, then you, you'll have a similar function. It's called onCollisionEnter. Right? So this is what happens when you bump into the ground. Uh, it, it passes this variable called Collision2D hit. And that hit contains all the data between the two impacts. So you see, this is when Rubeck collides. He, that's a collision, right? But it, this, this thing, this variable hit, it contains all of the contact points. So it contains every part that he hits the floor on. So if, when he's on a slope, he only has one contact point, the corner. But when he's on the floor, he has basically his right corner and his left corner are the contact points. right? And from those contact points, you can find the normal. Right? And if you don't know what the normal is, it's the point that points tangentially away from the ground. So if, if the, the normal of the ground here is straight up. And the normal of this slope is that direction. The normal of that slope is that direction. The normal of that slope is that direction, right? where the fairy is pointing. So you can grab the normal of any platform you land on. And then you can grab that split set. So that, if you see that's his normal, it's split into two components, x and y. And when we hit the ground, we don't really care what his x component is. Because if I hit a wall, then, then I have that's when I get an X component. When I hit a floor, I get a Y component. So we need to check that his Y component is greater than some value. So say 0.5. So 0.5 is a 45 degree slope, right? So 0.1 is like an 81 degree slope. Um, so if you look here, you, could, you can just summarize this whole function as on collision enter, if the hit contacts of zero, so just the first contact, you don't care about the others, it's normal, y is greater than 0.5, just that whole thing, then you're grounded, right? So if, you, if one of your contact points is pointing more than 45 degrees, then you are now grounded, right? So sorry that it's like quite abstract, but the, the, once you've got that, you, you now have the basis of being able to jump. Um, but a lot of people do a stupid thing when they're jumping, and that's applying a velocity again. And you're going to learn that I hate velocities over this talk. But the problem with that is, um, I shouldn't really call out another devs game, so I'm not going to actually. There's, there's a very famous platformer, which I think is awful, because um, it has two buttons. It has a small jump and a big jump button. I assume because the developers didn't know how to make it so that you can jump any higher. So you watch this on Ruba. If I, if I tap, I jump a tiny bit. If I hold down, I jump a long bit. But I can jump any height. Right? And the game almost feels like, obviously, when you start pressing the button, the game doesn't know how, hard, how long you're going to press it down for. So you can't just guess how long the player is going to jump for and apply a force. You've got to apply some kind of constant force. And a lot of games like lock you to a parabola. Um, I do a thing that I don't think any, I've not ever seen another game do it, and I think it's better. So here, feel free to steal it. Um, he's, it looks like he needs the toilet, but he's, I didn't have that many pictures. So the, he's, he's meant to be like this, like ready to jump, right? So the conditions you're going to use to tell whether he can jump are if X is in this button, right? Or A on a, on a Xbox. Um, if X isn't down and you're grounded, then you're going to make it so his grounded is false and his, that's going to flip, right? So now it says that X is down. But his velocity is not going to change his X velocity because when you're jumping, it stays the same. But it's going to add your base jump strength. So that's this tiny amount, which is the smallest amount you possibly jump. So if you just tap the button, that's the amount of jumping that you do like without any extra force. But then you've got this loop, right? And it's, I, I, don't, like, I don't know if I can explain this as well because it's quite difficult, but I'll try my best, right? So this is, this is a causeway for it. It starts at one and it goes to zero and 90 degrees or like half pi radians. So when you have this graph, essentially this first quarter of it is what I'm adding to my jump. 
So on the first frame, I'm adding one. And then as time goes on, I stop adding until I hit 90 degrees. Right? And then the, the rest of the graph doesn't matter because we don't want to add a negative force to him or he'll start being pushed down. So what we do is we have this value, jump boost. And this, that is basically your x position on a graph. And it's just a, it's just a um, you're used to thinking of like cars if you've used it in degrees. But instead, we're just thinking of it as a function. And instead of working in degrees, we're just working in frames. So every single frame, we add something to the x, right? And so that's this, this is just byte called jump boost. And if you take that, that's, that's an omega. C, the function you're using, is cars omega, which is his angular velocity, which you decide yourself. Um, you, you just vary that until you get a value you like. Times by this value that you're incrementing, then you're therefore going to get this graph. right? So if c is less than zero, and so c is y in this equation, right? So if c is less than zero, then you're, you're on the bottom half of the graph. right? And so we never want to apply a negative force. So as soon as c goes less than zero, then your apex is reached. So you've reached the top of your jump. So now, that's when c is less than zero. So if, if that happens, you stop jumping. But otherwise, you're going to add on your c times by your jump strength. right? And so that's going to get you this fluid jump. And that's all there is to it, but like, I understand that it's, it's not that easy for me to, like, it's just as complicated as it is. So if you understand that, I hope, I hope you understand it, but I can't really <laughs> explain it in more detail. But, um, so the, the, the next thing you want to do is wall jumping, right? And the, not every game is wall jumping, but wall jumping feels great. It adds an extra level of skill to a game. It gives you way more mobility. You can do loads of cool stuff with it. Um, so how this works is, it, I, I don't want to like labor the point, but it works pretty much exactly the same as the other function earlier. Except this time, remember the hit contact's normal. This time we're using x normals. We're not using y normals, right? So if you take this, if you see on his left side, that's when his normal is less than 1, right? So his normal right now is minus 1. Is normal now is one. So, the, whereas when you're on the ground, you're only looking at one thing. You're looking if you're pointing up. This time, you're looking if you're pointing right or if you're pointing left. And we're going to store that in a value, right? So, if it, if it's more than if he's on the right side, we're going to set this variable to one. If it's on the left side, we're going to set this variable to minus one. Otherwise, it's zero, right? So, if he leaves, you can see he's falling off. Oh no! Then the wall jump is now set to zero, right? So, so now if we we're on the side, we can tell that he if he's ready to jump right or he's ready to jump left or not ready at all. And if he is ready to jump right and left, then you can like do this. So you take his velocity and you keep the x the same, right? So if he's uh, the reason I'm gonna I'll come back to that in a sec. The, the main thing that's important, right, is this y. And what happens is, I, I actually half his current y velocity and then add this vertical value on. Um, every, so it works the same as a normal jump, but I give, uh, instead of uh, here, you add like a, the base jump strength. Here you're going to add a different type of height because you don't want him to go the exact same height off a wall jump than you do off the floor. Um, but the problem is, uh, you kind of want to retain his velocity as well. So if you notice here, um, I'm falling. You can, you could, if, if I'm falling downwards, right, then I've, I'm already moving down. So I don't want it that I suddenly, all my velocity disappears and I go from moving down to jumping really high. Um, and I also don't want it that if I'm sliding up, then I go slow. So if, if you see, if I slide up and then jump, I can get over the top, right? Even though I'm hitting the same point, right? I'm, I'm getting to the very top of that. But if I'm going down, then you see I, only, I don't make it all the way up because it's retaining its velocity from before. So here I go be below the edge, here I go above the edge, even though I'm jumping from the same point. Um, but the other thing is, I also keep your x velocity. So there's a thing that games do, um, good games, which is nice, um, which is this. You can keep your, you can jump in midair. So if you watch this, do you see that? I'm jumping. Wait, I'll do it on this surface because it's easier. 
Do you see I'm jumping like after I've left the platform? And it enables you to do stuff like this where I can like kind of get around a bend. Um, <laughs> I can't tell on the projector. But the like it, it enables you to kind of and you can do it off the top of an edge as well. So like do you see that? I can jump in midair. Right, and and that that makes the player feel like it's their own fault if they die. It's not your fault. It's not that they walked off the the edge didn't detect it, right? I can I've got like a split second where I'm allowed to jump in the air. So what happens is I also keep that X velocity and I add on something that pushes them away from the wall. So if I if I don't press anything, you see I move I'm moving away from the wall, like I don't have to jump. I don't have to push right, he just moves. Okay. So that fixes that. So you've got the, the other the other thing that's quite cool is um, like sliding. So if you if you watch this, like if I jump normally, you can see that I get just above the second block, the first block there. Like my height goes there. But if I'm running, then I slide up to the second block. You see? Uh, in fact, you can see better here. You, I can all, I can slide over the edge there. But if I just jump normally, I won't make it right. So what the game is doing is it's taking your X velocity and as soon as you hit a wall, it hits, it pushes some of your X velocity into Y velocity and that makes just the game feel good and it adds a little skill that the player doesn't initially have but the more they play the game, the better they get at controlling the character and that feels good because once they're like 50 hours into the game or 200 hours, they're going to be able to do all this crazy stuff that, that they couldn't do initially and it's going to feel a lot better. So it adds a skill window to the gameplay that you never get from just moving velocity based controls. So that does that. There's another thing that you can do um, which makes them feel better, right? So you've got uh, on your stick, right? The, if you've ever seen a GameCube controller, the GameCube controller is one of the best controllers of all time. Um, and instead of this circle, it had a grid. So it had eight little, it had like an octagon. And so if you pressed up, your stick was locked into the joint of the controller. And so you, it would always be directly up. But when you use one of these controllers, if I press right, I'm not really pressing right. Like I I'm going to try and press right here, and you'll see how horizontal the laser goes. Wait, do you see? Like, I, it's going to take. It takes me a while to go from there to actually going exactly horizontal. So even if a player thinks they're pressing directly in the left direction, they're actually probably pressing a bit off, right? And, and I consider myself good at games, but somehow I'm even surprised how bad my aim is. Like, that feels like it's all the way left, but it's really not to the left. So what you can do is, uh, this diagram is supposed to represent it, right? That's a stick pressing right, and that's a stick pressing right slightly up and slightly down. If you take your value and use clamps, right, and divide your, your reading by 0 0.9, then what that means is it's gonna, it only cares if you're accurate within 10%. Because any, if, if you're all the way to the right, then that's going to be 1. The, the reactor is going to read 1. Divide by 0 0.9 will be 1.1. 1 .1, and then uh, 1.101. And then that will clamp to 1. Whereas if they're, ten, if they're like 9 degrees off either way, then their value is going to be more like 0 0.9 or 1.1. 1 .1. And then when you, like, or minus 0 0.9 rather, and when you divide that by 0 0.9, it's going to become 1. Right. So if you just clamp that, then the game's going to feel a lot better. So there are the variables. We've kind of talked through them all. Um, I'm going to now kind of go into why you should probably control your own drag. Um, the, there's, there's a problem in games, right, moving platforms. And it doesn't sound like it should be hard, but it's really hard. Because moving platforms aren't a thing that really exists in the real world. like. If you think about it, when you're on a bus and the bus accelerates, if, if you're standing like still on a bus or a train and you're not holding the thing and the train starts moving, you like, the inertia pushes you back. And then it's only because you eventually catch up with the friction and the air resistance of the air pushes you. So you'll eventually move the same speed of the train that you, you, can, you can stand still on a train. But there's that first moment where you get pushed back. And you don't want that in a game. Like When you're standing on the moving platform, you don't want your character to fall off it. You want your character to be fixed in position. So when you're using a velocity-based game, it's not a problem. The platform moves at three. You move your character at three plus your own speed. 
But in a force-based system, you can't do that. Because if you add a velocity to a force, you're going to accelerate it. So it, it doesn't work like that. And uh, I get a lot of people always think they know the solution to this, especially in Unity. Um, I know the solution. No, you don't. Right? The, the, pr the problem with this is, um, say you're on a platform. Um, people think that you can just parent your object to the parent object. I promise you it does not work. Otherwise, I wouldn't have dedicated a whole segment to the top. If it was that easy, I wouldn't be talking to you about this right now, and I wouldn't have had like months and months of nightmare about it. And you can see here, this is me moving on a moving platform. And not only is it um, m moving normally, it's moving, it's moving left, it's moving right, it's moving up, it's moving down. Like, when I, a few, like maybe a, even a year into this game, I didn't think this was possible. Like, I never thought I'd be able to do this. Um, and at first, I was using hinge joints. So every time I stood on it, like it, w it would like hinge me to the platform. Um, I was using then, then like Unity updated and added surface effectors. I tried them, but then I just realized something I could do is it, it's it's a bit of a hack, but it works fine, right? So the thing is, when the player isn't pressing anything, right, they want to move with the platform. So if what you can do is you can read their, their current controller input and say that if they're not moving, move at the same velocity as the platform on the X, otherwise stand exactly still. And then what you can do is you can make it so that um, if they're pressing, you, you, can, you can also do this um, when they're holding the stick down, right? So if someone starts to run at the same velocity of the platform, they want to basically match it. So if <laughs> there's this formula at the bottom, right? So either if their input is extremely small, or if, their vol if the difference between their velocity, if their velocity is small, and the difference between their velocity and the velocity of the platform is small, so if they're slowing down to reach the, the approximate velocity of the platform, then you should lock them to the platform. And that's what this does. And it's not perfect, right? But I do know a perfect solution, and it's a bit stupid, but I can't do it, but this would work, right? And what that is, is if you had two root bears and one was off camera in an, another part of the world, so you just have a bit of floor or, or, like below everything and you have this invisible root bear running, then that would hold all of the calculations of moving left and right, right? But it would also, the, the, problem, the problem is because the engine handles all your drag and you can't control that and you can't, actually read the, the accelerations, you can only change the velocities. You're not able to do this, but you, you could essentially have it that you add the velocity of the platform onto this invisible rube bear who's under the world, like his velocity, and that would be a solution. Um, the best solution of all, to be honest, is to just control everything yourself, like con control the velocity yourself, control all this yourself, but the problem is it's just a pain because then you have to write your own collision detection, and I promise you, your collision detection isn't going to be better than Box 2D. So it's a trade-off. Like you can have pretty, you can have slightly imperfect, but basically working. You see, he slides around a very slight bit when it's something as complicated as that. But like you can have a system that's basically working and have perfect collision detection, or you can have your own hack together sort of working collision detection and perfect moving platforms. I personally think it's more important to have the collision detection working. Um, but I'm just going to show you this other thing now because like, I'm, I'm basically done here. But um, there's, there's, a, there's a very famous, well, I don't know if it's that famous, but there's a talk called Juice It or Lose It, right? And I'm going to open magical MS Paint here because MS Paint's the best. And it has a formula, right? And this is the magic formula that everyone should know and always use, right? And it's x plus, oh my god, let me just move this. MS Paint fails me once again. Please. Okay. Right, so if, if you do x plus equals desired or desired x minus current x, right, times 0 0.1. This is a this is a, a a lovely formula, right? And what it does is it takes say you have a position and you have your object, right? It makes it so every frame the object moves 10% of the way to its destination. So it basically makes you slide like to, to the exact point that you need it. It's like, it's like a lerp, but it's better because you're in control of it. Like, so 
th this is this is a formula that lots of game devs know. Probably most indie games you know. Like if you play any Vlambear game or anything like this, they are using this formula. They might not like openly say it. Everyone uses this formula in indie games, right? It's the holy grail of formulas. It's the it, it makes everything feel good. In fact, if you see the fairy there, fairy's moving up and down, right? So he's moving on a sine wave, but he. He kind of returns to, you can get him to come to your position at any point. Right? So if, I'm, if I fly really far away, you'll see that he'll zoom really quickly towards me because he's moving 10% of the way every time. But if I move a small distance, he, he slowly falls. Right? And those platforms are doing the same. Um, everything's doing the same. And it's <laughs> just this formula will make your life easier. It will handle all motion and, and make everything feel good. Um, but the problem is, in Unity, so, so that's, that's what most devs use, but it's not a good formula because it, it, moves, it moves a position, right? A move, you should never, ever, 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 if there's one thing you take away from this talk, never move an object by its position. Because if you move some, if you, if you in Unity, put like transform.position equals something else, then the collision detection breaks. So if you're on something and it's got some property or he goes through a trigger or something, everything's going to break because he essentially teleports every frame instead of moving fluidly. It doesn't calculate collision detection anymore. So what you need to do is you need to move everything by velocity. right? And this formula here, and I've derived it down here if you want to watch the derivation, right? It's that because... <laughs> Uh, you won't care about this, but it's called like the the method Unity uses for is called the the Euler method, right? and it's this. It takes your x every frame uh, is th this formula here. Your x every frame is the x of the previous frame plus your velocity times by the 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 delta time, the difference in time, right? So I I compared those formulas together and got this that comes out right. This velocity formula and in code is here, right? So if you take your velocity, and this this will work for everything. If you ever take your current velocity and you put it, e you add on like plus equals. It must be plus equals. So your velocity equals your velocity plus the position you want to be at. So this th um, this thing, the position you want to be at minus your current position times by your factor. So if it's one you move instantly. If it's 0.1, you move 10% of the way each time. If it's 0.01, you move 1% of the way. Divided by the fixed delta time, then that's what they're using, that's what he's using. That will make everything work with collision detection and go where you want it to be. They're using one, actually. So they, they know where they're supposed to be and they snap to one. And you can actually, uh, I don't know if I can do it here, there's nowhere I can do it, but you can if you manage to glitch these things and move them away, eventually once they return, they'll just go boom and like and uh, and snap back, right? Um, and the camera is doing the same thing. You notice that the camera moves slightly, like it it lags after me slightly. That's moving at three percent of the way every time. Um, so, but, but there's there's one extra step you need to do, and that's to at the end of it, you multiply your velocity by 0.9. Which seems strange, but there's, there's basically a problem is that uh, if you keep, if, if I have a velocity right and I push towards the middle and my velocity is high, I'll overshoot. So if you want to get to a point, then it'll go like this, boing, 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 and it'll just like keep oscillating forever. And you want it to eventually reach the point, right? So if you times the velocity by 0 0.9 every frame, you're still adding on this thing that's going to push it towards it, but then it's going to slow down eventually. So it'll go like, you say. Or, or like, it depends. If the if the drags if the drags very high, then it'll just go straight there. If the drags low, then it'll. So you can you can actually do all sorts of that formula. You can make things like, you can, you can make things oscillate towards a point, or you can make things move really slowly. Like it, it's a really good formula. Um, but unfortunately, ugh, my controller's become unplugged again. I should have just used tape. So yeah, eventually, like the, there is a small problem with this is that like. You kind of need to put weigh your gravity really heavy. Uh, I'm being an idiot. I need to set off this thing. If if I jump on this wheel, right, then this wheel starts rolling. Um, sometimes when it's moving down, like I'll fall off, right. So the the solution to that is you should you should make your gravity really high when you're on something like that, 
because that, that way like he's always going to feel like he's on the floor well, even when the thing drops. Um, but yeah, like, oh, I, I didn't jump over it, but there's another coffin I can get to at the bottom, I think. No. Okay, well, whatever. Um, yeah, so th that's pretty much like everything I wanted to talk about. Um, that's me. I'm Alex Rose Games on Twitter. Um, you can feel free to badger me with questions. I will help you with everything. I love to tell people like how things work. If you've got any questions, feel free. Да, пожалуйста, вопросы. Hello, my name is Sergey. Thanks for Hello. the talk. It's, uh, great stuff. And um, you didn't cover a bit more details on movements, especially uh, what you can say about uh, uh, jump uh, velocity being uh, dependent on the velocity of the ground. So if you are standing still on the ground, can you uh, jump the same uh, width when you are just accelerated in the movement? Yeah. So, so w with that example, say your platform, right? So, if your platform's moving normally, right? If it's moving horizontally, then your vertical jump is going to be the same. But your horizontal jump is going to, like, the formula for the jump retains your velocity, right? So, if you're if you're already moving right and you jump, then it's going to move you right as well. But the I n I know what you're saying there, and the the, the thing about that is, say, say your platform's moving, right? and you want to jump right relative to the platform, but you have this thick jelly world that you're in. You still want the character to kind of move right of the thick jelly world. So that's what I was saying with the, with the rude bear on the bottom. Like if you, if you have an invisible character, right, and he's living separately to the world, it's a really complicated solution, but you could basically make it so this second character, it calculates his velocity, and then it always adds on the velocity of the box. Currently, my game doesn't do that, and it feels fine. Like no one's ever complained about it. Like, but if you, but if you are moving right and jump, um, like it wouldn't work quite how maybe you m might think it works. I don't know. It's it's it, it. But that is an insanely complicated problem. Yeah. But the best okay. solution of all of that is to just make sure that you keep as many variables as possible, other than mass. In your own code. I was talking about an, uh, another thing, but this was also useful. I was talking about, uh, like in Mario, you have to uh, accelerate to mm. current uh, to a certain speed to jump over some gap. Yeah. So, and uh, if you are standing still or on the edge of the gap, you can't get across it. Yeah. Yeah. So I have the same things in this. So, um, like, you've what, got a. What, what's your preference on? Uh, should do a good game implement such mechanics, or you should allow uh, jumping? Uh, really far from uh, one point in the seal. Yeah, so so I I think that like I mean I've got <laughs> if I maybe I could even show you I've got the game somewhere. I don't want to load the wrong version, but I can probably show you the exact situation you're talking about within my game. Uh, da -da -da -da. Maybe it's on the E drive. Uh, Ripper. In fact, it's going to be it's going to be too much of a pain for me to bring to quickly bring up the game. But um, I, I my opinion is that you shouldn't like when you jump, it should retain the velocity. But like if you if you're jumping, if it's going through a gap, right, in the situation you're saying, and you've got a wall here, then you should like in my game you'd wall jump over, I guess, something like that. Like it it, it really depends on how you as a designer want it to mm -hmm. feel. I I just say. Make it feel what feels good. Just experiment. Another thing that I uh, find many games are missing to make the games feel really good is when you're jumping on some platform and that platform is uh, statically nailed down to the air and doesn't move uh, when you jump on it. So I think it's better when uh, the platforms react a little on So do you mean like uh, in the musical note blocks in Super Mario World? Yeah. Like when you jump on them, they go boing. Yeah, something like this. So, uh, uh, so there's, there's, a, there's an easy way you can do that, right? So what you do is, you do the thing I was talking about. You tell the block, your desired velocity is here. And then you tell it, always move 10% of the way there every frame, right? And then you'd make it light. So as soon as you hit it, uh, the mass of that block is low, lower than yours. So you, you hitting it pushes it down. But then the formula of it, the force moving it back would bring it back up. So you'd be able to make it go like boing, 
uh, that's how I solve that. <laughs> also, uh, do you think it's a good uh, idea to make the camera react on the impulses uh, your character gets? So if you hit a wall, you shake the camera a little. Yeah. So like um, that. So yeah, so I recommend watching uh, JW from Blambear has a talk called The Art of Screen Shake. I recommend that. I don't actually use much horizontal screen shake because I find it a bit distracting, but I use vertical. Um, so if, you, if you're moving, like, uh, if something bumps into you, the camera will tilt. And I have a talk, like, T, like not talk as in T-A-L-K, talk as in T-O-R-Q-U-E, like a, a rotational force, right? And the torque always pushes the camera back to the middle. So I like make the camera wobble and it will always move. It uses the same formula, right? It did the same thing. It, it, it always tries to get to zero and it uses that magic, that thing. Um, but the, yeah, what, what, like, but what I do is because the camera, in terms of moving towards you horizontally or like in the frame, I only move it 3% of the way towards you every frame. So if you wiggle around loads, the camera isn't going to wiggle because the camera's moving slowly towards you. So even if you go like this, the camera's not, like you're not moving fast enough to make the camera spaz out. So yeah. Okay, thank you. Great stuff.